see those moving horizontal lines? Those are called raster bars, and they're a staple of 80s and 90s computer games and demos. Lots of computers could generate them, but the Commodore Amigas were special. How so? Because Amigas have a freaking radiation gun monitoring robot that makes the things! That's why! Okay, that was a little extreme, but it's pretty close to what happens. And to start this explanation, we have to talk CRTs, or cathode ray tubes. When the Amiga was in production, CRT monitors and televisions were the standard display technology. CRTs work by powering up a strong electrical current that shoots varying amounts of energy through colored holes against a radiation shielded screen. That electrical current's position is controlled by two very strong magnets that, using science, change the horizontal and vertical position of the stream. The strength of the electrical current determines the brightness of the red, green, and blue color at a point on the screen. This whole assembly is called an electron gun. Electron guns sweep from the top left of the screen down to the bottom right in a zigzag pattern. When they hit the right side of the screen, they shut off the electron stream, drawing absolutely nothing, until they reach the left side of the next line on the screen. When they hit the bottom right, they shut off the stream and head back to the top left. These periods where the stream is off are called the horizontal and vertical blanking periods. When a TV station, VCR, or home computer send image data to a CRT, they send not only the strength of the electron stream for each point on the screen, but also horizontal and vertical sync signals. The electron gun synchronizes its movement with these signals, ensuring that the stream of image data being sent is drawn correctly. Yes, but when are we getting to those sweet raster bars? We're getting there, we're getting there. Now, we've got to head over to the Amiga and two of its custom chips, Agnes and Denise. Agnes is very demanding. It wants, no, needs to know where the electron gun is located so it can coordinate with Denise to render the correct image. Agnes keeps track of where it wants the electron gun to be as a pair of X and Y coordinates. Agnes also has the power to send the horizontal and vertical sync signals, using those coordinates as the triggers. Agnes has direct access to chip RAM, and image data on the Amiga is stored in chip RAM using structures called bit planes. You get two to the power of number of bit planes, visible colors to work with. On an original Amiga, that maxes out at 32 colors or five bit planes. You can use a sixth bit plane for some magical display modes, but we'll deal with that some other time. The custom chips all have their own registers, two byte data storage spots built right onto the chip itself. Denise has 32 of these for color information. Denise also has six registers that accept incoming image data from Agnes, 16 pixels of data at one time sent as bit plane chunks. Agnes also has registers that point to the areas of chip RAM where the bit planes are stored. There's a bunch of other registers that control display rendering, but this is me hand waving all those away. At the start of a frame of data, Agnes takes two bytes from each bit plane spot in RAM then advances all of the bit plane pointers by two. It sends those bytes over to Denise, who rotates the bit planes around and starts calculating the color index of each pixel. Denise looks up the current color for that particular pixel's index and sends that color to the electron gun, who promptly paints it on the screen. While this is going on, Agnes is advancing its internal electron gun position. Once Agnes has fed a line's worth of data to Denise and calculates when Denise will be done sending it all to the electron gun, Agnes hits the horizontal sync button and everyone has a few moments to catch their breath. Then it starts over again for the second line and the third, all the way down to the end, when Agnes is out of data and the electron gun has to start painting the next frame. Agnes hits the vertical sync button and gets ready to draw the next frame. Raster bars. Getting there. Now it's frame two and Agnes needs more data. Where's it coming from? Technically, the CPU could set the necessary registers, but then the CPU would have to manually track when Agnes started the vertical blanking period and set the data then. Luckily, Agnes has a robot friend. This is the copper, or coprocessor, and it's a circuit in Agnes that watches Agnes's internal electron gun position and writes to custom chip registers whenever it reaches programmer-defined positions. The programmer defines the copper's behavior using a set of instructions written to a copper list, a block of chip RAM that Agnes hands to the copper at the start of each vertical blank. The copper then executes each instruction one at a time until it hits the end or until the next vertical blank starts. The first thing we can get the copper to do is set up the pointers to the bit planes. We need to get this data to Agnes ASAP so we don't wait for the electron gun to be anywhere. 
we place the move instructions necessary to populate those bitplane registers right at the start of the copper list. Then, we place a special wait instruction that marks the end of the copper list, describing an impossible electron gun location for the copper to watch for. It'll wait until the next vertical blank, at which point the process starts over again. This gets the frame rendering engine we've built running. But I know why you're really here. Say it with me. Copper bars! I mean, copper bars! It's the copper that makes drawing raster bars on the Amiga easy. Let's change our frame generation setup to use only one bit plane, so two colors max. We set Denise's color register 0 to black, and color register 1 to white. Then, we add two instructions to our copper list, right before the impossible wait instruction. We tell the copper to wait until after the end of line 2, and then to move the color red into Denise's color register 0. Agnes's position counters continue to advance during both the horizontal and vertical blanking periods. Now, as the horizontal blank finishes, Denise has red in color register 0, so it sends red instead of black to the electron gun for pixel index 0. That is, until we change it again. We can add another wait for the end of line 4, and then another move to set color register 0 back to black. And voila, a copper bar. But you can do more than single unbroken horizontal lines with the copper. The copper can wait for any horizontal position divisible by 4, so you can create a chunky vertical copper bar, or two sets of horizontal ones, or whatever your imagination may allow, limited only by the hardware itself. And, keep in mind that, for this entire process, the 68000 CPU is basically doing nothing. So you can have it cranking out more copper lists, a frame at a time, to create some really sweet animations. So next time you see some awesome demo or obvious rainbow effect in a game, you'll understand the coordinated dance that Agnes and Denise perform, along with their robot friend the copper, to make it happen.